This is a pre-tutorial video about graphs for MED1022 Population Health Tutorial 5 on Biostatistics. There are many different types of graphs and each has a different purpose and displays data differently. Some are suitable for categorical data and others are suitable for numerical data. There's another pre-tutorial video that discusses types of data. The types of graphs that this video will discuss are bar chart, pie chart, scatter plot, histogram and box plot. After seeing each graph, I want you to identify what type of data that graph is represented. You might be able to already name these graphs or you might need to watch the video to be able to identify what's what. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify which each of these graphs is. So this is an example of a bar chart. The bars the percentage of births without a skilled attendant are solid with white fill. By glancing at this graph, you're able to see what proportion of births without a skilled attendant there were in Europe, in Eastern Mediterranean and in Africa, to name a few of the countries. Also on this graph are two line graphs of maternal mortality per 10,000 live, live births, that's in the black line, and neonatal mortality per 10,000 live births in the grey line. Have a think about what type of data would be used to graph the percentage of births without a skilled attendant. Is it categorical data? or is it numerical data? This is an example of a pie chart. You start with the total population, half are males and half are females. Then you take all the females and divide them up into different age groups of up to 24 years, 25 to, 20, to 69 years, and 70 plus years. And then from there, you take the piece of the pie out, that is the population at risk, when you're looking at cancer of the cervix. Note that for a pie chart, the percentages have to add up to 100% or one. Have a think about what type of data you can graph with a pie chart. This is an example of a scatter plot. On the X axis or horizontal axis is the average number of cigarettes smoked per day. On the Y or vertical axis is the annual lung cancer death rate per thousand people. Each dot represents one data point. On this particular graph, there's also a line of best fit. The line of best fit is created using linear regression. If you want to find out about linear regression, read the appropriate part of chapter four of the basic epidemiology textbook, or remember it from math methods that you would have done at school. What type of data can you graph using a scatter plot? The bars in this particular graph are an example of a histogram. So what this shows is the number of people who had a serum cholesterol between 160 and 190 milligrams per deciliter, 190 to 220, 
220 to 250, 250 to 280, etc. If milligrams per deciliter units doesn't make sense to you, look below to the scale of millimoles per litre, which probably makes more clinical sense to us in Australia. The dotted line is the mortality from coronary heart disease, but you don't have to pay attention to that line for looking at the histogram graph. Have a think about what type of data, categorical or numerical, you can graph using a histogram. The next type of graph we're discussing is a box plot. In the top left corner is a box plot of the weight of cardiac surgery patients in Australia in six hospitals between 2001 and 2006. You'll see that there are some dots either side of where I've marked the minimum and maximum. The dots represent what the stats package stater regards as outliers. The minimum and maximum values, excluding outliers, are indicated with a line. Then the box part of the box plot is between the first quartile and the third quartile. Q1 indicates where the first quartile is. That's the 25th percentile. That means that 25% of the values are below that point. Q2, otherwise known as the second quartile, is the median. So that's the middle value of all of the data. Q3 is the third quartile or the 75th percentile. So that means that 75% of the data is below Q3. Box plots are good for looking at what the spread of the data is. If you look in the bottom right corner, there's a histogram there's not a histogram, there's a box plot of preoperative creatinine levels in cardiac surgery patients by dialysis status. For people who weren't having dialysis when they went into hospital, the majority of, of observations is less than 0 0.2 millimoles per litre. Whereas for people who were on dialysis when they went into hospital for their cardiac surgery, you can see that the creatinine level is much more spread out. We'll be talking about normally distributed and skewed distributions in another video. This is the end of the graphs pre-tutorial video. Now I want you to identify what type of data is used to make each of these graphs. See you in class.